Off our coast, there are magical underwater forests. A world of giant seaweed, known as kelp. These underwater forests are among the most productive places on Earth, supporting a huge range of marine life. The forests are vital nursery grounds, giving sanctuary to the young of many commercial fish as they feed and hide among its fronds. And if you're lucky, you might glimpse a common cuttlefish or the exceedingly rare short-snouted seahorse. In fact, these forests are so special that they're one of the most biodiverse environments on the planet. Home to thousands of species, from spider crabs searching for food on the forest floor, to lobsters hiding beneath the canopy. Every part of this remarkable forest is used by the creatures here. The fronds are home to tiny animals like these sea furs, filtering plankton from the water, and a place to find food for grazers like this top shell. Like coral reefs, the forests create an oasis of life wherever it grows. It's the perfect place to lay eggs. This mermaid's purse has a baby cat shark growing inside. And this is a squid nursery. Each finger-like capsule has more than a hundred young squid inside. We're discovering these underwater forests are vital, not just for sea life, but in climate change. Reaching up towards the sun, the kelp fronds lock up vast amounts of carbon as they grow. Ian Hendy is an expert on kelp forests. Globally, kelp forests will draw down more than 600 million tonnes of carbon. That's roughly twice the amount of carbon that the UK emits per year. What that's doing is reducing climate change. They stabilise the sediments, they can actually mitigate or reduce wave energy by up to 70%. And as a consequence of that carbon being drawn into the kelp, the kelp will pump out lots of oxygen. So it oxygenates the water and creates a whole biodiversity for lots of wildlife to survive. Once these magnificent forests extended all along the Sussex coast, from Selsey to Brighton, Today, only pockets of this life-generating kelp remain. Casualties of changing fishing practices, which have damaged the kelp's habitat. And other factors, like dumping sediment close to shore, which block the kelp's light, limiting its ability to grow. Now, an exciting plan to regenerate the Sussex kelp forests, led by the Sussex Inshore Fisheries and Conservation Authority, is getting started. The kelp forests along the Sussex coast, and particularly the West Sussex coast, used to be very extensive and very dense. And that's changed in the late 1980s, early 1990s, to the point where today there is almost nothing left and it's taken place out of sight. And that makes me feel sad. 
And what we're trying to do is, is, is bring that back. There's a huge reduction in the presence of fish in this area. And we think some of that can be attributed to the loss of this important habitat. We see it with cuttled fish, we see it with lobsters, and over the last few years we can see a reduction in black sea bream catch as well. If we want to see the kelp come back, which is what we want, then we're going to have to give it a chance. So our plan is to push trawling away from the coast out to four kilometres where the kelp forest used to be. We really need these nearshore habitats to be thriving so that the fish can thrive. And we think this will give the kelp forest the chance to regenerate, to regrow, to restore it. If we are successful with this restoration project in Sussex, the amount of marine wildlife that's going to generate again will be just fantastic. We need these kelp forests. We need them to purify the water. We need them to have the nursery function back. And we need them to reduce localised areas of climate change as well. We can't do this without you. Visit sussexwildlifetrust.org.uk slash help our kelp to make a difference. To do something as dramatic as this, as, as far-reaching as this, would, would make me feel very proud.